Hey everybody, and welcome to the next quick take where today we are going to be talking about what is a data mesh or a data fabric in 10 minutes or less. All right, so in a general sense, a data mesh is a superstructure over top of all of your data, your systems and your processes. And the reason that it is a superstructure over top of all of them, it is a polyglot type of mechanism. I have a whole video right here talking about polyglot systems if you want to check it out. But for this video, let's keep it simple. So a data mesh is a way to connect silos across the board without having to make yet another silo. And it does this at the compute layer. You can do this with a knowledge graph, for instance. And it doesn't require you to change the data sources and the databases that you are deriving that information from. It's very similar to linked data practices where you basically can use the data wherever it lives when you need it. This is something else that I talk about in my ELT versus ETL video up here if you are interested. So what is the main reason to do this? A big one is these are very flexible. It is essentially something that is sitting over top of all of the other systems and data sources that you have, not to control them, but to synthesize them when you have a higher order question that the individual systems cannot answer or that individual data sources cannot answer on their own. It's also very flexible when it comes to change because you're not changing at the raw data level. You are essentially changing your needs and requirements at that data mesh level so that all the other data that you have will support whatever changes you are already making at that data mesh level. This is something that you can achieve with building out your own enterprise knowledge graph. There's a whole lot of things I'm going to link down below from uh, Stardog and TigerGraph and Neo4j and a lot of other folks that have been talking about this. But there is also enterprise catalogs that you can get. My friends over at data.world, this is not sponsored, are really good at that. So here is a very common reason you might want a data mesh. If you have data sources, knowledge assets across your organization, maybe you're using Slack, maybe you're also using Confluence, maybe you have rally boards for your agile development, maybe you also are using Teams and Yammer. There's a lot of different places that we end up storing our information. If you need to bring all of those together in an easy way, well, you're not going to try to transform all of those workflows that are all, maybe already working for your users. So why not just have a data mesh at the top that if you needed to query all documents related to the internet of things, it goes out to those different systems and finds any pages that are on the internet of things and serves that up to your user. And here is what a data mesh might look like. So if this is something that sounds interesting to you, let's dig in a little more. So if you had the following scenario, how would you solve for it? Let's say you have a new project for your development team. You have a large system. You have a large team that works on that system. You have multiple departments. Maybe there are different teams working on different pieces of that system. You also have different areas in the business that don't have anything to do with engineering, like HR, finance, sales, marketing. Well, they all have different data sources. And sometimes those data sources might need to be interacting in a way to answer some questions that we have from an overall business perspective. So if I needed to find out if I need to hire a new team for the project that I'm working on in engineering, or do I have engineers at the company already that have the skill sets and the experience to help with that project? Now, one thing to keep in mind is many engineers will have the same role, but they have different skill sets. The main skill set for the role is probably very similar across the board, but each person has individual experiences and skills that they might not share with one another. That's what makes every person at your company unique. But how do you tap into that kind of information so that you can find out, do you have the engineers to supply for this project or do you need to hire out? Usually engineering as a group doesn't 
keep a list of all personnel and their skills. But there is a group that does do that at the company and that's called HR. That is maybe even talent acquisition. So what if you could tie your needs in engineering to the individual employee and individual employee skill sets? Well, you can do that using this polyglot kind of data mesh approach. And the way to do that is you have the data mesh that's sitting over top of all of these things that you already have at your company. Those individual groups, data sets and systems are going to continue to be autonomous. We are not going to build a monolith in this situation. What you're going to do instead is you do need to look across all of your different systems and data sources and understand how do I make this data a little bit more interoperable. And a good way of doing that is if you can use, if you already have them, unique IDs, or if you can go through and assign unique IDs. You have unique IDs across all of these dispersed data sources. Each of these departments is going to have its own schema, its own data sources, and potentially its own IDs. If you can make those IDs unique, and there's a way to kind of retrofit that um, if you need to, watch my UID video up here for more information. What you can do is that superstructure is basically going to pull up all of the data that it needs from those individual sources to answer a higher level question like how many engineers do we have to staff this new project? Do we have the skills to supply that project? And the answer is you can absolutely do that with a data mesh. Now, another use for data mesh is to tie together analytics. So if you have sales analytics that's talking about win-loss analysis, let's say you won certain sales and you lost certain sales for certain reasons, you can tie those reasons the whole way back to the engineering group so that you can then tie your engineering work to solving some of the problems that you found in the loss analysis and supporting the work that you know is doing really well with your win analysis. Those two things don't often talk together, but with a data mesh, you can do that. You can then query off of not just the data in a monolithic database, but you can actually tie together that information across your industry without disruption. That's a big perk of going with a data mesh. It is something that is relatively unique because a lot of companies do have monoliths and unlocking all of their systems to play well together is sometimes a difficult task. But I will say being someone that has been on the front lines of projects just like that, you can do it even with legacy systems. So that is essentially how you would define a data mesh or data fabric and some of the use cases for it and why you might want to consider doing one. If you